Let's say there's 100 women in a room. How many of those women have problematic periods? Best estimates would say 20% of those women, if not more. I mean, that's a lot. How many of those women are going to get help? One of them. Tarek, that's such a shocking stat. Sometimes you do get women going to A&E with their period. Kindi knows only too well what it's like to suffer from heavy periods. In university, I started out wearing tampons, but then I realized I am bleeding quite heavy. I can't just wear a normal tampon, so I used to wear the tampons and the pad. As you can see, this is quite bulky. Carrying a thick pad all the time is a bit embarrassing. And I'm not just using one, I'm actually using two at a time. And having to change, not like everyone, maybe every three, four hours, but every hour. A few years ago, I was at work and my boss looked at me and she just said, you don't look well. I went to the GP and they informed me that I was anemic. I took iron tablets and I got a scan and I was told that, oh, you have fibroids. Fibroids are non-cancerous lumps that grow in and around the uterus, made from muscle and connective tissue. For most women, they can be harmless and will go unnoticed. But for one in five, they can cause serious problems. Symptoms include heavy, painful periods, pelvic pressure, back pain and anemia from excessive blood loss. My mother had fibroids, my aunt had fibroids. So you kind of normalize it, thinking it's okay for the heavy bleeding. And it's only until I have discussion with other women that I realize that this is actually something that I need to address. Fibroids are often small and don't need to be treated if they're not causing symptoms. Medication can be used, but if these prove ineffective, different types of surgeries may be recommended, including a hysterectomy. When you came to see me originally, you had on scan multiple fibroids, yeah. all of different sizes. When I felt your tummy, the fibroids were above your belly button, which is pretty big. What would that look like? So really for the size of the uterus overall containing the fibroids, we're talking about something that's about a football size. Wow. wow. And if we think that a normal size uterus is about that size compared to that. So it was a pretty large uterus. I've got some pictures of your surgery, so you can see what we saw inside. Here is actually the largest of the two fibroids, which is taking up the entire front of the uterus. I can't believe that's how huge the fibroids were. What we've done is we made a big incision across the top of the uterus, and we're dissecting this fibroid right out. This left Kindy's uterus intact, so she can have children in the future. The normal uterus weighs 60 to 80 grams. Your fibroids alone weighed nearly 700 grams. And you took that out without any major incision. That is absolutely one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen. When you have multiple fibroids, you'll never get every single little one out. And what matters with fibroids is not whether they're there or not, it's whether they're causing you symptoms. You should assume that we're not going to need to do anything else in the future. <laughs> but if we do, you know that there's something we can do. In the next few months, Kindy should see a vast improvement in her period. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to doing that you couldn't do before? Not having to plan my life around my period. <laughs> That's one of the main things. It was an honor to see your uterus. 